This is Jill Janice of Huntress, and you're watching the Heavy Press Interviews. So I'm Jeanette LeBlanc with the Heavy Press. Why don't you tell me what do you do? <laughs> I'm Jill Janice of Huntress. I'm the lead vocalist. And we're on tour now with Lamb of God, Kill Switch Engage, and Testament tonight in Toronto. It's the very first show of the tour for us. Super exciting. Super exciting. So I've been watching tons of interviews of you on YouTube. And it actually made me really excited to interview you because I got to see how nice you are on oh. camera and everything. Oh. So <laughs> I'm really happy. But I learned while watching interviews that you started like your singing career doing some opera like that was your original influence right so how the hell did metal come in all this where did that influence come from you know it's it's been part of the journey all along you know my classical training is the foundation for my screams now so without that classical basis and without that training I don't believe I could maintain the voice night after night and and especially with the the type of multiple voices I use and screaming and the lifestyle it really the voice rules me now so it with with that training I'm able to really you know keep keep the ball rolling and, and not lose the voice yeah I'd imagine that would be very hard with your powerful voice like I heard you can hit how many different octaves how do they how do they say it in the in the singing world Four octaves, yeah. Four octaves, yeah. That's pretty crazy. It sounds intense. It's intense. The, the thing that may be confusing to those that aren't familiar with music theory is simply, I have four octaves, but I don't use those in metal. What it does is it enables me to use multiple voices and, and like I said, sustain the voice. But in, in opera, when I first started singing, I was 10 years old. And shortly after that, um, I was told I was a coloratura soprano, which is the type that can break glass, supposedly. I'm still trying. I make dogs howl. That's, that's the closest that's cool. I can get. That's awesome. So this has been a big year for Huntress. Like we saw you guys at Mayhem in Toronto this year. You just released your album this year as well in the summer. So, you know, when did you guys, when do you find that you really became noticed? Like I know you've been at this for a while, but when did you start touring big and really getting a huge fan base? I began looking for musicians for Huntress about 10 years ago um, to backtrack on the previous question, which is, why metal? I first uh, heard Suicidal Tendencies when I was about 13 years old and, and really, you know, got, got bit with the bug for thrash. And so at that point, my mother wouldn't really allow me to pursue a metal career. Obviously, I thank her now for it, but uh, that's where it really started was a love of thrash music. So now, forward into, you know, I'm going to school, I'm at a conservatory for music in Manhattan studying music and music theory, and, uh, and then I just wanted to put together a metal band and I tried, you know, relentlessly to search for musicians and anything I did, all the jobs I took on were all to fund my music. So I wrote a few demos, recorded them, and then I met a band named Professor in Los Angeles. Um, and then we merged and, you know, joined forces to create Huntress. And this was back in 2010, 2009, late 2009. And um, then we started just playing the underground circuit in Los Angeles, doing a couple small van tours. But the real change was when we released Eight of Swords, the music video. Once that went out, and uh, it just was a whirlwind. It was it's got a lot of views on YouTube, the video of it, I noticed. Well, we released it, and I knew it was going to definitely get some attention. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely an, an eye-catching video, um, but we didn't realize it was going to create such a frenzy. So we had about nine labels wanting to sign us, and Napalm Records wanted sober because simply they share the same vision with us. And, and that's really the key is, is why we're able to, you know, tour relentlessly and, and building our fan base. It's because we all are very focused on one vision and one vision only. Of course, so it is a lot of hard work involved then. It's definitely, it doesn't just come to you, right? <laughs> so yeah, what would, happens. yeah, exactly. So like we said, you just played Mayhem Fest. Right now you're touring with Lamb of God and Kill Switch Engage. What would your perfect fantasy tour lineup be? This can even be bands that aren't bands anymore. I would say, and my bandmates would agree with me, it would be King Diamond, Merciful Fate, um, 
you know, we love to tour with Judas Priest. We, we you know, we're, we're suckers for Nawabum, and um, you can hear a lot of that in our music. We are definitely holding on to the roots of heavy metal, and we'll always stay true to the roots of heavy metal while being modern and, and current and crushing. And, um, you know, we have, we have a variety of influences in the band, you know, black metal, death metal, thrash metal. So all of those come through. So any, any bands that, you know, that we've admired growing up. I think those are the bands we'd love to tour with the most. Um, and Lamb of God definitely is, is one of those bands. And for, for me, it's absolutely a personal victory and, and a, a dream come true. Uh, Kill Switch Engage, again, just a legend of metal and of course, Testament. We, we bow down to the, to the altar of Testament. Yeah. I know, this is gonna be an awesome show today. I'm so excited for it. So your new album, Starbound Beast, what is your favorite track off that album and why? Well, I can't tell you what my favorite songs are in any of our records um, because it's like telling you which children, which child I love most. Oh, you know, I I love all my children, um, uh, <laughs> but for different reasons. So yeah. I look at songs like like children, you know, and and they're all connected with a little thin red line, and 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 that's the way it is with all of the records we've done so far, which is just two. We released Spell Eater in 2012, we released Starbound Beast in 2013, and we'll be releasing the third next year in 2014. Yeah, one a year, that's the goal. Is it all written already or are you still working on it? We're still working on it, of course. We're on the road most of the time, um, but we do find time to, to write and focus and um, in December, the bulk of the writing will be completed. Awesome, we're so excited, so excited. So what, like, does Starbound Beast, do you find it has a particular theme or like hidden message behind it that we wouldn't really know about? Like, what do the lyrics kind of mean to you? Well, all, all of my lyrics are, are somewhat based in the occult and, you know, being a little white witch that loves heavy metal and smoke and weed, you can find a lot of that in there. We weave, um, you know, little messages within, within all of the songs. I'm the only one that writes the lyrics and the boys bring the compositions. We work together on them. It's, it's very much a unified um, purpose that we have. Uh, but with Starbound Beast, it's, it's the little creature that lives with all of us, um, that, that strives for more, that desires more, that is lonely, but, but, but wants to be with the stars and wants to return back to the, the cosmos. So with this, I was definitely influenced by the Anunnaki and Aldebaran and the Alpha Tauri region. So a lot of constellations, um, you know, and um, space travel. And, you know, we, we kind of get far out there. Let's just say that. It has a much deeper meaning than some might think. That's really interesting. So that's what I also really wanted to get into is how you practice witchcraft. Like, that is so, I think that's awesome. I've always been really fascinated with the culture and everything. So when did you know that this was what you were into and that this was your calling? How do you practice it? How did this kind of come into your life? Well, I'll never fully lift the veil of mystery. That's the first rule uh, for me personally. I'm a solitary witch. I am pagan. So um, I think the biggest misconception is that immediately people would think that aren't aware of it um, would think that it was, you know, evil. And, you know, it's, it's not the case at all. You know, I just want to live in the woods with fairies and, and unicorns and smoke weed and grow out my armpit you hair, you know, trip my balls off on shrooms, you know. <laughs> I'm that kind of witch. So essentially, I grew up with a very eccentric family that have always encouraged the secret site and, and I was raised pagan. So that's really how it all started for me was just from birth, always knowing that, that my path would, would be one of, one of the, the light of the light, path of the light. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you leave, lead a really interesting lifestyle. It's really cool. So if you could be any other musician for a day, I know your life is awesome, but you know, just any other musician one day, who do you think you'd be? Rob Halford for various reasons. Um, I feel like I'm a gay man trapped in a woman's body anyhow. <laughs> I'd love to have hot metal gay sex. Um, I'd love to absolutely sing the entire, uh, you know, painkiller album uh, on stage with, with, with Judas Priest. Yeah, so I would definitely live inside of Rob Halford's body for a day. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. I'd like to come out to that show. Now, we've just got a couple more questions for you. One that I'm always really interested to hear what people say is, I've got this question where if you, if I put a magic wand in your hand right now and you could do one thing to just magically change the world, what do you think you would do? Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I can't tell you that. <laughs> uh, I know what I would do. I know in my heart what I would do, but I don't think it would be very good for humanity. Yeah. But it'd be good for animals. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. At least, you know, you're caring about something <laughs> out there, right? That's what matters. So what's next for Huntress? Like, 
this tour with Lamb of God right now, but what's coming up next? You said in the new year, an, an album, awesome. Anything else we should be expecting? Well, Lamb of God is taking Huntress with them across the pond uh, in January. It's gonna be so cold uh, with Decapitated. So we'll be on tour with Lamb of God and Decapitated in January for a, a European and UK tour. We're really pumped. We get to go to Scotland and I've never been there before. I'm probably the most excited about that, that stop. That's awesome. Well, we're excited, and we're excited to catch you guys tonight. Thank you so much, Joel. Thank you so much. It's really Woo. good talking to you. Canada! Canada! Yeah. Toronto! Yeah! <laughs>